My most favourite thing at the moment is um, my latest title that I take greatest pride in is um, Land Regenerator and Cow Looker After Her. And um, that is the thing that's really exciting me at the moment since I've changed residence to Kulatai. So basically my um, great passion is about regenerating land and primarily using livestock to do so. My thinking is if you've got livestock of any description or a grazing animal of any description, then you've got the primary equipment that you need to start to cycle carbon, capture sunlight energy, and basically start regenerating land. Um, herbivores are the only uh, organisms that can effectively cycle carbon. So whether you've got cattle, sheep, goats, rabbits, chickens, um, whatever, from a management perspective, if you can control the movements of those animals, you can actually start to cycle carbon and regenerate land. Really the focus of what uh, I would like to, to uh, say today is that the key elements that you've got basically come free and, um, and you can start using those free elements to your maximum advantage, then you can actually start to regenerate land and um, uh, also have positive outcomes for the community as a whole. The first of these is water cycling. I put this one in because I thought it would be a, quite a familiar site to um, most people that are uh, residing in these parts. I just sort of looked at the, the local data and, um, and looking at, at what's happening just recently. So if you imagine you had, um, or on every hectare of land, you had 1% uh, more humus, that means basically that you can capture more effectively about 110, sorry, 160,000 litres of um, more water in rainfall. Um, and you'll probably hear more about that from Glen Morris tomorrow. Um, so looking at the Clarence catchment, you've got 2,271,000 odd hectares of land. And if you, on every hectare of that land, captured 1% more humus, or ha had 1% more humus and captured an extra 160,000 litres, that's over 3,500 megalitres of water that you're holding in your soil. Um, so do you expect that that might have some impact on the amount of water that's running through the landscape? Um, and of course that's not going to stop the rain events, but it will certainly alleviate, I would suggest, some of the impacts of that water moving across the landscape, not least of which is the soil that's going down the rivers with it. So, um, you know, one of, the, one of the first workshops that Lewis Kahn and myself did, we um, do three-day pasture and grazing workshops, and I think it was the very first one that we did down here and just sort of trying to qualify and quantify different uh, environmental effects. And we asked, you know, what the average annual rainfall was. Everybody in the room said, but that doesn't matter. It's not all effective because so much of it runs off. And, you know, to my mind, what better reason to actually work towards holding more water in the soil? So um, in terms of the uh, ecosystem processes that we're working on, you know, w water cycling is probably the primary one and it's one of the things that we can have most significant effect with with grazing animals. The second, of course, is uh, of the uh, ecosystem processes is sunlight or energy flow, actually maximising the amount of uh, sunlight that's captured. So um, you've got three key elements that uh, drive plant growth sunlight, water and uh, carbon dioxide. And without those three in adequate amounts, basically everything else is uh, inconsequential. But because they're free, doesn't mean necessarily that we need to discount them. So the capture of sunlight energy is the primary process in any grazing enterprise, or for any, any primary production endeavour for that matter. So the more green leaf you have, the more sunlight energy you're going to uh, capture, the more carbon that's flowing through the system the more energy, basically. So the more carbon that's actually cycling through the system, the more uh, effective carbon is fixed and basically the less CO2 that's being released in, into the atmosphere. But it's the, it's the carbon that cycles that really drives um, the health of the system. Um, Christine Jones's work, and you can bother Christine with, with the facts <laughs> at some stage, <laughs> um, is uh, Chris, Chris showed that um, with a just a half of 1% increase in carbon, which is equivalent to about 1% more humus, uh, in the top 30 centimetres of 2% of Australia's soils, that's um, the agricultural soils, about 445 million hectares, that um, 
that would basically and safely, safely and, perma and permanently sequester the equivalent of the entire nation's annual CO2 emissions. Um, so when you consider it, that's an area that's only four times the size of the Clarence catchment and twice the area of the whole Northern Rivers region. So it's not a huge issue and it's not a hard thing to achieve, yet we still seem to be battling with it. Um, it's, it's entirely doable. The key to actually achieving that, and it's been mentioned in uh, two previous presentations this afternoon, is um, biodiversity. Basically, we want the maximum amount of green leaf growing for the maximum of amount of time throughout the year. And basically, if you've got a, a diversity of plant species, you can get that, those differential growth cycles throughout a 12-month period. But you can also basically more effectively turn water into plant material. Um, in a reasonably healthy grassland in this environment, about 1,000 millimetres rainfall annually, um, you're looking at uh, a megalitre of water to produce 10 tonnes in a relatively healthy grassland. Um, but what if that grassland on that same amount of water could produce 12, 14, 16 tonnes of biomass? And think, when you think what you see above is, is reflected below in terms of grasslands, then that's uh, a huge impact on the capacity of that grassland or any grassland to actually hold more water and support more biodiversity. Um, because if you've got good species diversity above the ground, then you're going to have a much better species diversity below the ground in terms of the different um, biota that the different plants actually support. Um, it just makes good sense that if you've got a diversity of plant species, you'll have a much more improved and uh, more diverse population of um, soil biota. So it's the diversity of the roots that um, basically support that uh, larger amount of biota, um, aid soil infiltration and um, enhance the resilience and capacity of the pasture. But biodiversity is not uh, all about um, plants. It also includes um, other critters. Uh, and I had to include this photograph because he was so way too cute. So we're talking about the pollinators, the transporters, the decomposers, the water purifiers. They all contribute to um, the health of the environment. Um, most of them are hard to see, hence the representation by um, Fredo here. But we're also talking not only about species diversity, but it's structural diversity in terms of the, the height and the um, um, spatial diversity in terms of the location of, of species. They all add to the uh, variety of habitat to sustain more um, organisms in the whole environment. But getting back to the cow, this pile of poo was about one hour old. And I can't tell you how excited I was to see rolling dung beetles in the pasture. And I also have to say, I haven't heard a sound near as sweet as swarming dung beetles on dusk. They are just amazing. Um, I've got a new love of dung beetles <laughs> um, since moving to Kulatai. So basically it's the biology that drives the whole process. So without the biology, you really, um, the, the system is dead. Um, and these guys are the tip of the icebergs in terms of the, the active biology. Over 70% of the biology is actually associated with perennial plant roots and particularly perennial pastures. Primarily the fungi and the bacteria, the decomposers. Um, mostly, of course, they live in the top five to ten centimetres, but it's, the, it's getting those plant roots to depth, to aerate the soil, to open it up, to actually allow water to infiltrate more effectively into the uh, soil profile that really um, makes the system function at a, at a much higher level. So how do we get that? Increasing the number of mobs and the more paddocks per mob basically increases the flexibility that you've got and the control you've got over the whole grazing system. Using stock density, I can't emphasise enough how important stock density is to actually control this whole process of managing grazing livestock if to effectively build capacity in, in grasslands. You've got to base the moves on herbage mass. Any calendar-based system will eventually fail. Um, base, base your movements and the, and the control of the animals on how much is there when they go in and how much you want to leave behind because it's the, the actual utilisation that really drives the production. You have to leave at least 40% of the, of the biomass that you grow to contribute to the functioning of, the, of all the other critters that depend on the grassland. And basically the way to control utilisation <coughs> is through planning, 
planning the movements of stock and actually monitoring how much they're taking out and how much, more importantly, they're leaving behind. Um, it's a positive feedback system, essentially, and um, without going into great detail, no element actually works without the other. You reduce the incidence of overgrazed plants, you maintain depth of roots, root biomass, increasing the perennial grasses and the species diversity, you're basically increasing the aeration, you're increasing the uh, soil water infiltration, you're also alongside that increasing the amount of biology because biology are primarily dependent on root biomass and moisture present in the system. You're reducing the susceptibility to droughts and floods and ultimately increasing profitability. Um, and I suspect that my time is up, so I'll just say if you would like any further information, there's websites available for the, for the tools, for the software tools that, um, to help with the grazing planning and, um, and actually ensuring utilisation is optimised, the AIMS Ag website, and for a lot more information on a lot more material, um, holisticmanagement.org. Thank you very much.